Okay. Is it there? Hi. Yeah. Yeah, probably we can wait for a couple of more minutes and get yeah. started. I guess. I mean, for those who are already uh, in the session, uh, do you have any kind of difficulty with the pro uh, with the course or um, any feedback, any comment? Please unmute, unmute yourself and just uh, say a couple of words. Hi. Um. It says that we need to do projects. Is there any information on that, or is that is that not uh, a thing? Uh, no, not for this course. There is no project. It will be all quizzes, um, and some of the quizzes will require some programming, like the quiz five. Sorry, quiz four. Okay, thank you. And also, um, last last class, you mentioned that for like the first or second quiz, that there was some miscommunication on the time of when it was due and it could be reopened, is, is that going to happen? Uh, it should have already happened. If not, yes. yeah. If, if yeah, not, we reopened the quiz when there was a break for two weeks and uh, that was communicated. Did you not get that email? No, okay, that makes sense. I just thought like the first quiz, like I, I did it the day before, but it was already closed. So it, it said it didn't work, but I, I understand. I mean, we can take a look at these kind of one-off requests at the end of like, uh, at the end of the course, you can reach out to us. Our policy is not to extend any deadlines. And if there was uh, someone who has, has been attending all the classes, has been doing all the present because of some miscommunication, something was missed, we'll look into it. But uh, we are not going to extend deadline for the entire class. Okay, thank you. Any other question uh, in addition to quizzes and uh, projects, course specific, something you wanted to learn, um, you may want to learn something which was not uh, areas where you are having some difficulty, you may want us to go over it again or some set up some uh, help session kind of stuff. I mean, feel free to speak up. This is a live course and it seems like almost impossible to make you talk. I mean, um, other courses we would like, uh, there are a lot of uh, interaction during the course and uh, this course and the other course we are running for uh, Ivy, it seems like nobody speaks, not even on a chat. So it's, it makes it very difficult for us to understand what you really, whether you're understanding or not. Yeah, please feel free to comment or uh, if, if you, um, have anything that you would like me to cover in addition to uh, the topics that I listed. Uh, please let me know. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's totally fine. You say that I don't understand functions at all. That's fine. It can happen. And then we can try, we can see what could be done about it. Uh, but if you don't tell us, then we'll assume that you're understanding everything. I think uh, we can get started. Yeah, I guess because today is an important topic and at least uh, I'd like to uh, go over it in some detail uh, as much as time permits. Okay, so we'll start on the topic right now. So uh, this is an important topic uh, in order to understand uh, and write sophisticated programs in Python. So till now we have dealt with uh, elementary data like uh, integers and uh, um, string uh, integers and floating point and so on. And, and at this point, we would like to do, um, we would like to handle data which has kind of arbitrary size. And one standard way of doing it is through collections uh, or sequences. So what are the sequences in, uh, uh, that we are going to talk about? We're talking about strings, lists, and tuples. Um, I hope the slides are visible. Yes. Okay, thanks. 
so it's better than last time. Okay, uh, so a recap of the course that we have seen so far. We have uh, seen how to define a function, how to return values from a function. We have talked briefly about the scoping rules, uh, like how do you see uh, uh, where a variable is visible and how to refer to global variables and so on. So today we'll talk about more sophisticated data structures called uh, strings, tuples, sets, and lists. So um, we have already seen strings uh, in the first lecture itself, but now let's study it in a slightly uh, greater detail. Uh, strings in Python have type str and they represent a sequence of characters. And for the purpose of this course, let's just, meant, uh, let's just say that these characters are characters from the English alphabet. Uh, they are special symbols that you see on the keyboard, digits and so on. Python does not have a type corresponding to that of a character. This is different in other languages. Other languages do support characters. Python just considers all of them as strings. And strings are enclosed in single quotes or double quotes. And both of these are equivalent. Um, you can use uh, a string enclosed in a single quote or a double quote. And backslash is used to escape quotes and special characters. Sometimes uh, you may want a string in which uh, a single quote is a character, like in the case of an apostrophe or something. And you may want to include that in your string. Uh, and the way to do it is before the apostrophe or any such special character, put in a backslash. Okay. So for example, um, uh, the string could be name equal to intro to Python in single quotes. So that's a string. And uh, description is another variable, descript, uh, is, is equal to ACAD's first course. Now there's an apostrophe, so there's a single quote that is part of the string. And the way to include it is to have a backslash before the um, apostrophe. So ACAD's first course. So uh, the backslash says that uh, the special character that is to follow immediately, in this case, a single quote, is part of the string and not the and does not designate the end of the string. Okay. Uh, so as we have uh, followed in the previous lectures, the triple arrow symbol uh, just shows the Python prompt, and the output is uh, written without the prompt. Okay. So if you print name, it will say in, in intro to Python, and if you print the variable disk it will print a cat's first course. So notice that when Python prints it out, that uh, single quote is preserved as part of the string. You will not see the backslash because the backslash was used to indicate to when we define the variable that uh, the string does not end there. It has to go past that and consider that single quote as part of the string. Okay, so when you print it out, you won't see the backslash. So it's more readable when print is used. So when you uh, print uh, a desk, you will see that uh, a cat's first course is printed without this enclosing double quotes. Okay. Now, how do uh, you have to, so this is how you define a string. And uh, what makes Python interesting is that it um, gives you a whole lot of facilities to manipulate strings. One basic thing that you would like to do with a string is find its length. So for example, intro to Python. Now, if you count the number of characters, uh, you'll see intro has five letters, then there is a space, then two letters, then Python. So the length of a name will be a sum of length of intro to Python, and then two spaces. Okay. So let's also define empty, and uh, which is within single quotes, nothing. So the, that is a pair of single quotes without anything in between. And single is uh, a pair of single quotes with a single letter A in between. So when you print the length uh, of name, it will be 15, which is five for intro, uh, two, seven for two, and Python six, so that is 13, plus two spaces in between, so that is 15. If you print the length of single, uh, it's, it is a single letter, so that is one. And if you print the length of, length of empty, it's a pair of quotes without anything in between. So the length of the empty string is zero. 
Now, if you include a special character the way we talked about before, so one uh, backslash n two. So backslash n uh, stands for a new line character, which uh, stands for uh, an empty line. And uh, so when you print this length of special, it's not going to be four, but rather three. This is because backslash n indicates that uh, it's uh, backslash n is a special character, so it's a single character, and then uh, the length of it will be one plus the single special character plus two, which is three. So it's not four as you would expect. Now, what further can you do with strings? Uh, another basic uh, thing that you would like to do with uh, a couple of strings, if you have, is to concatenate them, write them one after the other. So that can be done using the Python plus operator. And then if you want to print uh, a string multiple times, uh, you can do that using uh, the star operator. So plus is used for concatenation, which is mean, uh, which means uh, writing a string followed by another string. And then star is used to repeat a string uh, an integer number of times. So for example, if I say, uh, um, remember that we had uh, uh, defined uh, name and disk, and we want to give, uh, uh, we, we want to concatenate those strings into something called details. So details is defined as name plus, then there's an intervening string, which is comma space, and then followed by uh, a concatenating disk. So when you print details, it will give intro to Python, comma, a cat's first course. Okay, so this is the plus operator is how you concatenate two strings in Python. Now, uh, of course, um, I mean, if you want to print uh, the same string um, multiple times, so let's say that uh, the uh, you're asked to write something on the blackboard as a punishment. I won't fly a paper airplanes in class. So print punishment. So that's a single statement. But if you say print punishment star five, then it prints uh, the same statement five times. So this is useful for um, let's say that uh, you want to print uh, 10 spaces between two, two adjacent columns in something that you want to print. So you can say that a single space star 10. So that will print it, uh, um, yeah, 10 times. So if you want to repeat the same string uh, an integer number of times, you say string star how many times you want it to be repeated. Okay, so we have a quiz. Yeah, I have launched the code. Okay. Can you all see the poll? I hope. Yeah, they are, uh, I got four responses so far out of 12, okay. six yeah. now. I can't seem to have it. Um, I can't seem to see it. Okay, waiting for a couple of more. Okay, so I will end polling and I'll show the results. So it seems 60% said that uh, hello star three yeah. will end up in error. And 40% four students said it will be hello, hello, hello. Okay, so, so this is just, just what we discussed right now. The star operator on strings uh, says that, um, yeah, the star operator on string says that whatever string precedes the star, print it that many times. Okay, so um, so hello star three would say repeat uh, hello three times. So it would actually show hello, hello, hello. 
um, so it's not an error because uh, you would think that um, it's not taken to be the multiplication symbol where it tries to multiply a string with an integer. That's not what's going on. So you just uh, um, repeat the previous string n number of times where n is the number given. It was similar to what uh, Satya showed us where punishment was multiplied by five times and should be printed five times. And then the example he gave where quotes multiplied by 10 will give like a space of 10 spaces. Yeah. Just just multiply times. Right. So this is slightly surprising and uh, it just Python provides you this facility, which is very convenient. Okay, now what further? So we have seen that given a string, you can take its length, you can concatenate two strings, you can repeat a string n number of times. Um, what, what else? So very convenient uh, thing, and uh, in fact, a necessary thing to do manipulation on strings is uh, to have a facility to index strings, okay? Um, so, yeah, so uh, the index means, uh, uh, so a string has several uh, letters in it and you want to uh, point to a particular letter uh, at the ith position, okay? That's what you want uh, by indexing. The first character has index zero. Please uh, remember this. Uh, this is not, uh, so strings don't start with the index one. So suppose you have name a cats and then uh, you try to say, print name zero, it will give A. Name one should uh, give you C. Similarly, name three should give you the fourth letter, which is A, C, A, D. So it's the uh, fourth letter, which is D. Similarly, hello one uh, will give you the, the will give you the second character, which is E. Um, now, one convenient thing in Python is uh, this thing called negative indices. So, if you have a negative index, uh, it starts counting from the right. So, minus one uh, would give you the last letter, which is S. Uh, minus five would give you the fifth letter from the st uh, from the last, which is A, and uh, minus two will give you the second letter from the last, with, uh, from the right, which is D, and so on. Okay, so this is something. Uh, well, um, if you find it confusing, you need not use it in your programs, but you may uh, when you read someone else's programs, you may find that they use negative indices for convenience. So negative means uh, your uh, starting your counting from the right end of the string rather than from the left end. And please remember, this is this uh, small detail to keep in mind, which is that counting from the left end, you start with zero and counting from the right end, you start with minus one. So if you use an index that is too large or too small, you uh, get an index out of range error. So if you say that your, uh, the string is name equal to a cat's and then you want to print uh, uh, the letter at index 50, that is to say the 51st character in a cat's, you will get an error. Okay, similarly, if you try to print minus 50, which is 50th letter from the right end of the string, then again, you'll get an error. You, there's no, if you, if you start counting from the right end, there are uh, only five letters. So beyond, uh, if it's anything below minus five, you'll get an index out of range error. Okay, so now uh, using indexing, you can get a single, uh, single position out of a string, but often when you want to program, uh, you may want uh, something like get, uh, uh, some substring of a given string. So this is given by a notation similar to indexing where you say if S is the string, then you say start colon N. Okay, so this gives you the string starting from the index start and the ending at index end minus one. Okay, so it is like, uh, it's not from start to end inclusive, it's uh, start inclusive and end minus one. Okay. So zero to length S will give you the whole string. 
both start and end are optional. If start is omitted, it defaults to zero. And if end is omitted, it defaults to the final character, the, 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 until the final character, which is the length of the string. Okay, so if you just say S colon, then this is the same as start is omitted. So uh, the starting character should be zero. End is omitted in this case. So the ending character should be length of S. So it will print all characters from zero to length S minus one. That is to say the whole of the string. Okay, so if I have a string ACADS and then I say uh, name from zero to three. Let's uh, just take uh, a minute to understand what will go on. Um, the starting index is zero. And you know that the, in, uh, in the strings first index is zero. So it will start from capital A and then it will go on up to three minus one. So it will go on up to index two. So it will print uh, uh, string of characters at index zero, index one and index two. So you should get ACA. Okay, so um, it starts at zero and then um, prints up to three minus one. Now, if you remember, uh, we when we discussed for loops, we had this thing called range, where uh, a range had something like a start index and an end index. Uh, and we said that it will start from the starting index and go up to n minus one. So what's happening here is something similar. It will start from the starting index and go up to n minus one. Okay, now let's see what happens with name everything omitted and colon three. So starting index is omitted. That means that it's zero by default and ending index will be three minus one, which is two. So it should be the same as ACA. And similarly name three colon, it will start from the fourth, uh, I mean index three, which is a fourth letter. So that is a D and then the ending is omitted. So it will print till the end of the string. So it should print DS. Okay, and you can do concatenation. So name colon three plus name three colon will concatenate a key, a ACA and then DS to so print the whole string. Okay, and then zero to length of name uh, will give you, as we discussed, it will print the whole string. Okay. The same if you omit, uh, omit both the starting and the ending. So it will print the whole string. So I have, uh, I think a quiz. Yeah, this should be quiz 15, yeah. This is a poll where they have a substring for hello, one to five, and then the other second one is minus one to three. three. Uh, I think I've launched the poll. Is it visible? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Good answer. Is the poll visible, I guess? Yes, they are answering. Yeah. Okay. So some we got like seven out of thirteen responses, eight of thirteen. Okay. Maybe you wait for thirty more seconds. Yes. So they are working on the two problems. The first one is hello, one is two, one colon five, and the second one is hello minus one colon three. Couple of more guys missing. Just answer, try think about the last slide which was discussed and then try answering this question. Yeah, so this is the last slide. Yes.
Yeah, please pay attention to the last slide. Look at it, how it is, uh, the slices are working. Okay, I'll stop and share the results. So, uh, so yeah, for the first one, hello, hmm. one colon five, they, out of uh, seven, nine, out of 11 students, four said hello, it will print hello, hmm. two said it will print H E L L, three said it will print E L L O, and two printed. Two said it will give index out of range error. Do you want to go over why? What's the answer? Okay, yeah. So, um, as I said uh, during the slides, so hello one, it, it will start with uh, the character at index one. Now, as we discussed, uh, the initial index is actually zero. So, one onwards means it will print E onwards. Okay, it will not print H. It will print uh, E and then how many, uh, so it will print up to five minus one, which is four. So if you look at the uh, whole string, the character at index four is O. So it will actually print E L L O. So that's what it should print. So five is actually not an index out of range uh, because it, it, it will not try to print the five, uh, the fifth character. Uh, I mean, or rather the char character at index five. Uh, it, it will print only up to index four. So this is fine. And the second one was minus one to three. Yeah, so this one uh, will print. So minus one means uh, it's the last, it's the first character from the right. So that is O. Uh, this is the starting position and the ending position is three. So it cannot print uh, starting from uh, the fourth position and ending at the third position. So uh, uh, sorry, it, it cannot start from index four and then end up at index three uh, or index uh, three minus one, which is two. So in this case, uh, since uh, it cannot be printed left to right, uh, it will just print the empty string. Okay, that's fine. Um. Do you guys want to go back and discuss the slide 13 again? Because a lot of students didn't get the idea that where the string index starts from zero, not one. Yeah. Please, uh, this, is, um, this is something that most programming languages uh, nowadays follow. And this is something that uh, we are not used to following in real life, which is that if you, if you start uh, indexing, uh, you think that the first position is H in the case of hello. So it, it starts indexing from zero. And uh, the, there's a reason why uh, this, this is done. This is uh, to make uh, certain um, array manipulations easier. So this is slightly uh, um, advanced topic for this kind of a course. Um, and uh, the easiest way to explain it, at least in India, is that uh, in India, you start counting from the ground floor. So the first floor, uh, when you enter a building, is not the first floor. It's actually the ground floor. Now, I, I don't know the Canadian convention. So in India, when you start counting, this is similar to the British uh, way of counting floors. You have the ground floor, then the first floor, then the second floor, and so on. So uh, imagine um, that you start counting from floor zero, floor one, and floor two, and so on. This is mathematically more convenient, even though uh, this is slightly uh, tricky when you start. And uh, it's good to get used to this because uh, whenever you code in Python or C or any of the modern languages, all arrays start with index one, uh, index zero rather than with index one. Okay, so please keep this in mind. This is, if you're programming for the first time, this is uh, definitely uh, something that you know, tri will trip you up from time to time. So please keep this in mind. Okay, so now let's just, uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I just asked the students, like if they want to go over slide 13 again, because yeah. that's important. 
Okay. If you guys don't understand this slide, then you will have problem in list and other data structures as well. So yes, I think that it makes sense to go over slide 13 once again, because sure. the same thing will come in list and everything. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so, okay, it, it didn't hurt. Just take like a couple of, uh, just two minutes and just go over it once more. So, okay, fine. So the, the, the whole point is that uh, it's not just for strings, for any kind of data uh, uh, sequences that we'll uh, discuss from now on, the first thing uh, will start at position zero. Okay, so uh, when you say something like string from first position onwards, it will not be the uh, first character, it will rather be the second character, okay? Uh, yeah, so with that understanding, let's go forward. And then uh, let's see uh, if we uh, have this one. So, uh, so I'll just discuss a slightly uh, tricky concept in slicing, which is that you can slice with negative indices. We have seen this uh, in the quiz question. So if you have uh, uh, minus four to minus one, so this means that I'll start from the minus four, um, uh, the, the fourth character from the right, which is C and then end up in the, uh, so the uh, last character is S, uh, that is the character at minus one, but I should end at uh, minus one, minus one, because it's from start to N minus one. So minus one, minus one is minus two. So this should print uh, C, A, D, okay? And similarly, mi minus four to the end will print C, A, D, S, Minus four to four will print uh, starting from C, it will print all the way up to uh, four minus one, which is three. So it will print C, A, D. And just to keep this in mind, please uh, keep the following table in, uh, in your mind. So if you have a string like ACADS, the indices go from zero to four, because there are five characters in the string. Or counting from the right, it will start from minus one to all the way up to five. Uh, all the way up to minus five on the left. Okay, so slicing with negative indices is something that, um, um, yeah, is useful in some occasions, um, but you may find it confusing. So one way is to, uh, you know, try out uh, several combinations on the uh, command prompt. Now here is something that, uh, uh, well, yeah, it's kind of um, annoying because it is non-uniform. Out of range slice indices are ignored for slicing. Uh, so as programmer, this is very nice because you will not get unnecessary errors. But when you try to understand Python, uh, if you try to uh, extract out a single index and that index is out of range, you will get an index out of range error. But if you try to slice and the starting point or the ending point is out of range, it's okay. You'll get a reasonable output. Okay, so if you say uh, that uh, uh, if start and end have the same sign and if start is greater than or equal to end, start should be less than or equal to end in order to have, um, yeah, so, yeah, start should be less than or equal to end in order to get uh, a left to right slice. If start is greater than end, uh, then you don't get anything. You will get an empty slice. Similarly, if the uh, uh, ending is uh, an index that is very high, you will get a reasonable thing. Uh, so for example, four to 50, the starting position is the fourth character, uh, in uh, the character at the fourth index, which is S. And then what is the ending position? It is uh, 50 minus one. So it should print up to the 49th index. But then there's no such thing. So you'll get a reasonable output, which is S. But if you try to print 40 to 50, both indices, the start index is itself out of range. So you will get the empty string. You will not get an index out of range error. Uh, similarly, if you print uh, minus 50 to 20, uh, the starting index is minus 50, which is way uh, below uh, the first. So counting from the right, you only have five characters. So minus 50 is way to the left of that. So we'll print the whole string. Okay, so uh, in the case of uh, out of range slices, uh, you won't get an index out of range error, um, but rather you will get a reasonable output. Now this is uh, something because uh, 
this is something that programmers may like because the program will have fewer errors but this means that you have to keep two rules in mind if you extract out a single index and it is out of range then you will get an error but if you extract a slice and the slice indices are out of range you will get a reasonable output what you expect okay so and you can try it out with uh, negative symbols and so on okay so now let's look at the last which is name from 1 to minus 1 okay uh, and let's see what happens here so here the starting index is positive and the ending index is negative the rule is the same you just have to be more careful when applying it so the character that will be printed the starting index is 1 so it should start printing from c onwards and till when should it print uh, it should print up to minus 1 minus 1 because minus 1 is the end and it should always print up to n minus 1 so it should print up to minus 2 minus 2 means uh, the second character from the right so it will print up to cad okay so keep this in mind you may expect cads but it will print only cad because the negative index uh, minus 1 means it will print up to n minus 1 which is minus 1 minus 1 so it, it will print up to minus 2 Okay, so it prints only CID. Okay, and I think this quiz was basically the uh, la the second question of the last quiz. So we'll just move on at this point. So we've seen strings. Uh, strings are just uh, sequences of characters. And we have seen that as far as strings are concerned, you can extract out characters using index. You can... Uh, take slices using start and end followed um, separated by colon then you have seen other operations on strings like taking the length of a string concatenating a string with another string and also repeating a string n number of times so we have seen a few operations on strings now let's so this was just a sequence of characters what other things are supported by python so a tuple uh, consists of a number of values separated by commas. So this is also a kind of sequence, uh, but it may look like the following. So it may be a sequence of strings is uh, t equal to intro to Python. That's one string, comma, another string, uh, Ame Kakre, uh, an instructor, and then followed by 101, which is like the code of this uh, course. Now, if you type t0 so this is uh, t would be uh, a sequence of values and uh, this is what is called a tuple in python t0 will be the first element of the sequence which is the entire string intro to python t1 will be ameka kare t2 will be 101 uh, one, which is the code okay so it's a tuple there are three values in the tuple which are separated by commas and uh, as usual, the first component will be at index zero, the second is at index one, and the third is at index two. Okay, so, and if you print T, it will print the sequence intro to Python, comma, America, comma, 101, but within, within uh, brackets. So this is just like if you try to print a string by itself, you will get the string, but enclosed in double quotes. So the double quotes uh, or single quotes, which say that where the string starts and where the string ends. Similarly, the brackets indicate where the tuple begins and where the tuple ends. Okay. Now you also have uh, empty and singleton tuples. So if you just have a pair of brackets with nothing in between, it's what's called the empty tuple. And uh, singleton will be just one item with a comma at the end. So please keep this in mind, because had you written something like singleton equal to one, then singleton would become an integer, uh, because one is a number. But since there is a comma at the end, uh, that's not an error, that's not a typo. Um, since there's a comma at the end, it indicates that it's a singleton, it's a tuple with only one component. Now, tuples can be nested. That is to say, some components of a tuple may themselves be tuples. 
So for example, if I have a tuple uh, Python comma ma comma 101 and another which is a student Prasanna comma 34 comma something else, okay, course ID or something. Then, um, so re remember, oh, sorry, uh, the, th the third component is course. Course is itself a tuple. So when you print student, you will see that Student is a tuple with three components. One is Prasanna, the second component is 34, and the third component is course, but course itself is a tuple. So the third component is uh, a tuple which says Python, comma, ame, comma, 101. Okay, so notice that uh, course tuple is copied into student and changing course does not affect the student. Okay, so if I later say that course is now stats, Adam and 102, if you print student, it is still Prasanna 34 Python Ame 101. So whenever uh, you uh, say that a new tuple is created with, uh, with the help of another tuple, that old tuple is copied into the new. So uh, when you print student in the end, you may expect to see Prasanna 34 followed by stats Adam 102, but that's not what happens. Whenever student was created with an inner tuple, the inner tuple was actually copied inside. Uh, so it has its own copy and that copy cannot be changed by just changing course. Okay. Uh, is that clear? I hope. Right. I think it's important concept because a lot of places you will see that by changing uh, in some of the other data structures, if you change the uh, part of the data structure, you will see the your second structure will change by itself. Whereas in tuples, it's copied. Yeah. So we will we will revisit this topic at the end of this. Uh, uh, we will revisit this topic at the end of this lecture itself. But this is uh, an important uh, thing to keep in mind. And please come back to the slides uh, if you feel confused. Uh, there are other places in Python where you change course and when you, uh, when you print student, you will see that student itself has changed. But this will not happen if student is a tuple. Okay. Yeah. We'll come to this important concept later in this lecture itself. Now, what can you do with a tuple? You can take the length of a tuple and uh, length is exactly as you would expect in the case of a string. So let's go back to course, empty, uh, student, and so on. Course has three uh, components. So uh, if you print length of course, you will see three. Length of empty would be zero. Length of singleton would be one. Length of student uh, is, student, student has only three components which is Prasanna 34 and course. It's a different matter that course itself is a tuple which has length three, but when it's embedded into student, student actually has only three, area, uh, three components, which is one is Prasanna, the other is 34, and the third is a tuple, but that's okay, it's just a single component. So the length of student is not, as you, would, as you may expect, it, it's not five or something because uh, it's, it's not like Prasanna 34, Python, Ame 101. It's not five items, it's actually three. The first item is Prasanna, the second item is 34, and the third item is a tuple, which is course, and it will be counted as one. So length of student is three. So this is uh, slightly, um, uh, yeah, slightly important, and please pay attention to this. Um, as with strings, uh, tuples can be concatenated, repeated. You can index into tuples, you can slice tuples, and they behave almost exactly as with strings. Okay, so suppose you have two tuples, course one, course two. Course one is Python, Amaze 101, and course two is stats, Adam uh, 102. And if you concatenate the two tuples, you will get a, a single tuple with six components, Python, AME 101, STAT, ADAMS, and 102. Okay, now how does index work? So if you have a tuple, let's say with six components, and you uh, index, uh, and you use index three within square brackets, 
it will give you the fourth component. Again, keep in mind that the first component of a tuple is starts at index zero. So starting at index zero, one, uh, two, and three. The third uh, index is com corresponds to the fourth component, which is stats. So this is exactly as in string. Slicing works exactly as in strings again. So if you say two to seven, uh, it will print from component at index two, which is one zero one, and goes on up to end minus one, which is seven minus one, which is six. Okay. In this case, you will see that uh, it has only six components, right? So the indexing will go from zero to five. So seven is seven minus one is actually past the last index. But as we have discussed, it will not give you an index out of range. It will do a reasonable thing, which is try to print as much as exists. So it will print 101 stats, Adams 102. So it's supposed to print until index six, but there's no such thing as uh, an item at index six. So it will go up to index five and print. That. Okay. Uh, now the star operator, which is like uh, print a tuple multiple times. So if you say uh, cos1 star 2, it will print uh, Python ame 101 Python ame 101 So it will create a six component tuple where uh, the components are repeated. So this is what uh, happens with uh, tuples. And it's easy to keep in mind, these are exactly what you would have, what happens in the case of strings as well. So there's nothing new here. Okay, and there's a small quiz. I'm launching. Okay, so this is poll 16. We got four out of 13 responses. We have now five. I'll just keep the previous slide on the. Yeah. Okay, we are still missing five people, right? So please answer, not three. By looking at this slide, you should be able to answer. Last 10 seconds. Okay, I'm ending the poll. So 70% of the students selected option two. Yeah, so that's the right one. This is exactly as in the last uh, thing in the slide. So it creates a larger tuple uh, where uh, instead of having two components, which is a cats comma two, it has uh, four components, a cat two, a cats two. So this is what happens in the case of a tuple with the star operator. Okay, now uh, we have seen uh, uh, tuples and this in Python, there's a very convenient thing that you can do, which is to unpack a uh, tuple. So strings and tuples are examples of sequences and they support the same kind of operations like indexing, slicing, concatenation, repetition, and they work similar in both uh, kinds of data structures. Now, in order to pick apart a sequence, so take it, take it apart and assign components to some variables, 
you can uh, use what is called the multiple assignment uh, uh, statement. And uh, one rule of multiple assignment is that the number of components on the left hand side of the assignment should be equal to the number of components on the right hand side. Okay, so they should have equal length. So let's say that uh, a student is Prasanna 34 and then I have a course embedded within the student, which is Python AMA 101. Now uh, I can have the following assignment statement. Please pay attention to the form. So on the right hand side, I have student, which is a tuple. On the left hand side, I'm not assigning it to a single variable. I'm assigning it to three variables together. So uh, the three variables are separated by commas. So this is why it is called a multiple assignment. And uh, the uh, variables are called name, role, and registered post. Okay. Um, so since the, so uh, remember that three variables separated by commas would essentially be a tuple on the left hand side. I'm assigning a tuple on the left hand side to a tuple on the right hand side, which is student. So what happens is that uh, the first component, uh, uh, component zero is assigned to component zero of student. Component one of on the left hand side is assigned to component one of student and component two on left hand side is assigned to component two of student. So if you display name, it will give you Prasanna. If you display a role, it will give you 34. And if you display a registered course, okay. Now this is component two of student, which is itself a tuple. So if you display it, you will get the whole tuple. Python AMI 101. So the rule is that, uh, okay, it's called a multiple assignment. But keep in mind that what's essentially happening is that we are assigning a tuple on the left hand side to a tuple on the right hand side. And the length of both the tuples is the same, uh, of both the tuples are the same. So component wise, they get assigned. Okay. So name gets assigned to Prasanna, role gets assigned to 34 and registered course gets assigned to the third component, which is basically uh, a tuple itself. Okay, and you can do this uh, strangely enough with strings as well. Okay, because a string is basically a sequence of characters. So if I say x1 comma x2 comma x3 comma x4 equal to ma, and then uh, so basically it's a sequence with four elements on the left hand side and the four elements on the right hand side, which is basically on the right hand side you have a string with four four characters, but uh, the same thing will happen. Component wise assignment will happen and you will get uh, A, M, E, Y. X1 is A, uh, X2 is M, and so on. Okay. So this is a very convenient way to uh, handle data. Okay. Now, uh, we'll come to a more, uh, a very important data structure in, uh, so we've seen strings and tuples, and from uh, kind of practical experience, uh, strings are very important because you'll use them. Uh, this is the standard way to do text manipulation. And uh, you may find that uh, lists are more often used than tuples. So I would say uh, ranking in the order of importance, I would rank strings and then lists. Okay. So tuples are also important, but they, are, they have a fixed length. So lists are a very powerful data structure that can that you can do to do a variety of programming tasks. What is a list? A list is an ordered sequence of values. Okay. I mean, but so were strings, so were uh, tuples and so on. We'll, we'll later see what makes lists so special and so powerful. Okay. Now this is the same as in a tuple. It is written as a sequence of comma separated values, but enclosed in square brackets. So if it's a tuple, it's enclosed in uh, ordinary uh, uh, curved brackets. And if it's, a, uh, if it's a list, it's enclosed in square brackets. And uh, the values within a list can be different types and so on. But usually when you program, all the items in a list will have the same type. So what's an example of a list? 
so you could uh, type uh, maybe lst equal to within square brackets okay please keep in mind had it been within curved brackets it would have become a tuple right but here it's enclosed within square brackets so you have uh, within square brackets 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and when you display list it will give you the uh, the whole thing enclosed in square brackets okay. list is also a sequence type so all operations that you can do on strings uh, uh, as well as tuples you can do the same operations on lists so uh, suppose i have a list of fibonacci uh, numbers so one one two three five eight and so on uh, if i i can uh, extract the i can find out the length of the list by just typing len of fib just like i could type len of a tuple or len of a string okay and it will give you that fib has 10 elements uh, also a minor point that you may see on the slide is that in the case of a list if you have repeated elements they are counted as distinct occurrences so fibonacci starts with 1 comma 1 uh, and they are kept as two distinct occurrences of one they are not like merged together as just one and so on okay so distinct uh, repetitions are allowed and repetitions are retained as distinct occurrences. Now, uh, just like with strings and tuples, you can index fib3. Just think for a moment. Please uh, remember the, uh, the model of the story that indexing starts with 0. So you have fib0 is 1, fib1 one is 1, fib2 is 2, and fib3 should be 3. Okay. So it starts at index zero and goes on and three would uh, index three would be the fourth element in the sequence. Slicing is possible. So if you say three onwards, so it will print from three uh, to all the way up to 55. Okay. Now sequence operations, we have seen concatenation. Uh, uh, so if you have two, uh, strings we can concatenate them if you have two tuples we can concatenate them similarly if you have two uh, uh, lists you can concatenate them using the plus operator so if you have zero plus fib you will get a sequence with 11 elements uh, where the starting element is zero so whatever is placed in the beginning is, will be the initial list similarly you can repeat so you can say three star one one two so this will print one one two one one two one one two three times and the length of the output will be three times the length of the original list. How about multiple assignments? Yeah, this is possible. This is what is called unpacking. So if you have X, Y, Z, and then uh, on the right hand side, you have one, one, two, uh, you have multiple assignment. Please remember the rule for multiple assignment, which is that len of left hand side should be equal to len of right hand side. If there, if there are unequal number of items, then the multiple assignment may not succeed. Okay, so in this case, uh, on the left-hand side, uh, the len is 3. And on the right-hand side, I have a list with len equal to uh, 3. So since both lengths are the same, I'll get an item, item by item uh, assignment. And then if I print x, I'll get 1. If I print y, I'll get 1. If I print z, I'll get 2. So I hope this is clear, uh, and uh, this is um, this is very nice because all kinds of sequence types in Python. If you understand one type, the other types work exactly in the same way. Okay, in the case of a list, you have uh, more functions available to you, and this is what makes lists so powerful that you can manipulate lists in a huge number of ways. So for example, uh, I have an append function. Uh, what it does is if you give me an item X and L is a list, if you say L dot append X, it will uh, put X as the last element of the list and give you a new list. Okay, uh, you can extend a list with a sequence. You can insert uh, X at the ith position of a list. You can remove an item X. 
pop means you rem uh, remove the item at index i whatever i don't know what the item at index i is but you just remove it and if you if you just say pop it removes the first item and so on uh, index x uh, returns the first occurrence so if x is in the list it returns the first occurrence similarly l dot count if l is a uh, list and x is an item it prints how many times x occurs in the list uh, there are also more uh, so if if you have a list of numbers let's say l dot sort would sort it as in ascending order l dot reverse would reverse the list and so on so these are very powerful things that you can do with lists which are automatically available uh, made available by python you don't have to program them yourself So here's a small quiz. Okay. So I'll just. Um, I think uh, if you can flip back the previous yeah. slide. We got four responses so far. Okay. I'm sharing the results. So 20% said one, one, two, three. 70% said one, two, three, one. And one response was one, comma, two, comma, three. That is the list will not change. Okay, so um, yeah, the answer is that one will be added at the end of a list. So you will get one, two, three, comma, one. Okay. Um, the first one was you could have gotten that one by concatenation, which was yeah, I guess oh. that uh, it was a concatenation. Yeah, and the th third is not possible one comma two comma three because as it was said earlier, even if they are repetitions, the distinct uh, the same number will be kept, and repetitions of the numbers will be kept. Yeah. So you don't have uh, you don't have to have unique occurrences. It can be repeated multiple times. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And in case you have any uh, clarifications regarding this, you can also look up the Python website. Uh, the document, the official documentation for Python will give you exactly what functions are available and what each of those functions do. And this is how, um, I mean, no programmer goes around with uh, all the library functions, all the uh, available functions in, uh, in their head. Uh, you, you just look up online documentation to see what exactly have, what functions are available and what exactly each function does. Okay, so now uh, a very subtle point uh, and probably something that I will emphasize. Tuples and lists look very similar. Okay. Um, But there is a huge difference when it comes to actual uh, manipulation of tuples and lists. Lists are what are called mutable data structures and uh, tuples are immutable data structures. So mut mutable means uh, lists are allowed to change values inside them, uh, whereas tuples are not allowed to change values inside them. Once, once you create a tuple, it remains as it is. So contents of a list can be modified, whereas contents of a tuple cannot be modified. And we'll see an example of this in operation. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, even though this is a personal opinion, that um, you know, lists are more popular 
than tuples because tuples are very uh, have a very specific uh, purpose whereas tuples are more whereas lists are more general purpose so you can create a list and lists can change over time but tuples once created remain as they are so let's look at a very uh, simple example i have two lists indoor and outdoor which are a list of games um so indoor contains badminton table tennis and carrom and outdoor contains let's say football and cricket and games is now um, a tuple because it's enclosed within uh, curved bra brackets so it's indoor comma outdoor okay indoor is itself a list outdoor is itself a list and both those lists are contained within a tuple now what what did we just discuss we said that list can change but the tuple cannot change okay so if i just now i've just created the tuple i i just print it out and i'll get that it's a tuple containing two lists the first is the list of indoor games badminton table tennis and carrom and the second component com, uh, component that index 1 will be the list of outdoor games which is football and cricket now let's say that i have a third list uh, uh, you know solitaire hearts and free cell which are all card games um yeah let's say uh, i print games zero games is a tuple uh, the component at uh, index zero is a list of outdoor uh, of indoor games so it will get badminton table tennis and carrom now suppose i want to change games 0 uh, equal to card okay i had a change of heart and then uh, i wanted to say that the allowed indoor games are card games but this doesn't work because tuples are immutable once you create a tuple you cannot change the components so uh, because game 0 is now fixed as the list of indoor games uh, badminton table tennis and carrom and you cannot change it to card games right now okay when you when you try to do this you will get an error and python will uh, throw an exception throw an error a type error okay now suppose i did uh, uh, i created a new tuple which has three components remember this is not games this is uh, a new a tuple called games 1 it has three components the first is the initial list of indoor uh, games the component at index 1 is the list of outdoor games for football and cricket and component at index 2 is the list of card games okay now i can do slicing so games up to index 2 would be uh, game starting from index 0 and ending at 2 minus 1 which is so you have badminton table tennis carrom football and cricket okay now this is the same as games okay so if you say games up to 2 uh, games 1 up to 2 uh, is the same as games if you use a comparison it will say that the comparison is true okay now let's this so so far we have created three lists indoor outdoor and cards and i've created two tuples games and games 1 we have earlier seen that once you create a tuple you cannot change the tuple but what about lists so outdoor games were initially football and cricket and suppose i i you know want to change outdoor zero to hockey this is allowed because lists are mutable Comp uh, so the elements inside a list once created can be later changed this was not possible with tuples we have already seen that so if you say outdoor zero instead of football you just say hockey uh, now uh, outdoor zero is hockey and now if you say games 1 uh, 2 uh, equal to games it will say it's false because outdoor has changed so in fact if you print uh, games it will still show badminton table tennis carrom Uh, it will actually show badminton table tennis and carrom and the second list has changed which is hockey cricket okay because the list outdoors has actually changed now earlier i said games is uh, a tuple and it is immutable 
so why did uh, the second component of list uh, of games which is the outdoor list why why did it actually change inside games okay and this is a very subtle thing and uh, you may require multiple uh, passes over this to understand it uh, okay what does the tuple actually contain the tuple contains a, a two references one is to uh, the list indoor and the other is to list outdoor okay they cannot change to uh, these references cannot change to different lists let me go back a couple of slides okay if you wanted to change the first component of the tuple to card i am actually what i want to do is to change one list to a completely new list this is not allowed okay so that's what's not allowed because tuples are immutable so changing outdoor to uh, uh, cards was not allowed okay but why did games 1 not change because it contains references to different lists okay uh so two lists can have the same content but they need not be the same and modifying to uh two lists with the same identical components will not change the other okay so let's look at it pictorially i have one list called football and cricket another list called uh, badminton which contains badminton table tennis and carrom the first list i ha i had called outdoor the second list i had called indoor and games was a tuple which had references to two lists the first was to uh, the outdoor list and the second was to the indoor list and games one had references to two different lists i mean they are they are completely different they just happen to have the same content so one is ta badminton table tennis and carrom and the second list is football and cricket so the contents of these pairs of lists are the same but they are actually different lists they are two copies of uh, two lists now i changed outdoor list to hockey and cricket okay games is immutable it still refers to the same list as outdoor and indoor but the content of outdoor has changed that is allowed because games itself is not changing it games contains two references it is not changing it's just what is what is being referred to that has changed okay so now if you print uh, games you will see that it prints badminton table tennis carrom and then hockey and cricket whereas if you print games one it refers to uh, the two list badminton table tennis carrom football and cricket okay so this is important um one way to think of this um this is an analogy uh, that um, i mean i'm trying to think of an analogy to make um le let's say that uh, you know there is there's a way of uh, referring to let's say uh, the you know the the prime minister of uh, uk for example people will say that 10 downing street has said such and such okay now we know that what uh, is implied is that the resident of 10 downing street who is the british prime minister has expressed such and such an opinion right so the address 10 downing street so is always the residence of the british prime minister but the actual resident is allowed to change because once terms get over the resident changes so the analogy here uh, i'm stretching the analogy a little bit is that a tuple is somewhat like the address uh, that address is itself uh, constant but what resides at that address which is the list inside the tuple that is allowed to change it can change its contents and so on so the the tuple itself contains two addresses the address of uh, outdoor and the out address of indoor and those two those two lists may later change but the references remain the same okay so this is slightly tricky um and i would encourage that uh,
try it out programmatically write a few programs and see what happens with lists and what happens with tuples and um, uh, i'll just say that it's very rare that uh, you will actually end up with data structures in in uh, when in introductory programming courses where you have lists inside tuples and so on but it's important to understand what is meant by mutability and what is meant by immutability uh, tuples once created cannot cannot change afterwards whereas lists are allowed to change and as in, as beginning programmers uh, you would probably want to use lists more often than tuples because they behave tuples behave in slightly uh, restricted way okay. so with this understanding um, so here is a summary of sequences that we have seen so far uh, so um, we have seen three kinds of sequences one is uh, strings the other are tuples the other uh, and the third are uh, lists and the operations on all of them uh, are similar uh, even though the the nature of the data structure is uh, different the operations that each of them support uh, are similar so you can extract the ith uh, content of it by using the i uh, index operator you can compute the length using len you can concatenate two sequences using plus you can repeat sequence n number of times by using either n star sequence or sequence term n similarly you can slice from start to n minus 1 and you can also say e in sequence to see whether the element is in the sequence e not in sequence to see element is not in the sequence and for e in sequence means iterate over all elements in the sequence so this is like for i in range 5 so it will iterate i from 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay so uh, as i said before i have uh, included the link for the standard python documentation uh, and it, please go here and look at the documentation uh, to see what each functions do and uh, function which functions are available and python has a rich library of functions that are already available to you so that is why uh, it became popular as a programming language here is a slightly advanced topic uh, that uh, i'll mention uh, and you will often see this in uh, style of coding in advanced python programmers so this is something called list comprehension you need not use this style of programming when you are doing introductory programming but i'm mentioning this because you can later come back to it and see what this is just to remember uh this is a very short way to build a list and this is similar to the set builder notation in maths uh, which you must have seen in school so uh for example if i want to uh, say the set of squares of numbers from 1 to 10 this is i can explicitly list them out as 1, 4, 9 so on up to 100 but i can also write it as the list uh, the set x star x where x is drawn from 1 to 10 this is standard mathematical notation to say uh, that uh, how a list uh, how a set is built so for all uh, x from uh, 1 to 10 include the element x star x into the set so a list can be built in exactly the same way i can say for x in range 1 to 11 that is going from 1 to 10 include the element x star x so please notice the style in which it is written this is exactly written in the case of as in the case of the set builder notation so x star x is what i want to include in the output and then how do i want to build the list is basically uh, select x from 1 to 10 in sequence so there i write for x in range 1 to 11 okay so this is a very concise way of ex expressing a list and uh, yeah so you can do this in python and uh, so uh, this says that uh, a list comprehension consists of a for expression and uh, initially there will be an expression of what the output should be and then uh, there will be a for expression okay and you can do more uh, sophisticated things with this 
So you can say nums equal to minus one twenty five nine minus thirty. So some list containing positive integers and negative integers, and then I want to build a list which consists of only the positive integers in that list. So I can say position equal to x for x in nums if x greater than zero. So only those elements which are positive will be taken into position. So this is a uh, this uh, style of writing a list is called list comprehension. i encourage you to try this and some of you may like uh, this as a natural way to express a list i find it tricky to big uh, uh, for beginners okay and you can do uh, so there are several examples which are given you can also nest uh, you can write for uh, x in 1 2 3 for y in a second list and so on so the value is produced as though you had written a nested for loop for x in 1 2 3 for y in the second list if x star x equal to y then include x comma y okay so you can have multiple for expressions and it will work like a nested for loop okay so now uh, so this is a, a last topic so i'll just skip the list uh, Uh, i'll just skip the last quiz because this is based on a slightly advanced usage of list comprehension i'll just mention the last topic in this uh, which is the uh, notion of sets so this is uh, python supports the notion of finite sets uh, as in mathematics uh, and this uh, are exactly as in mathematics so it's a collection of finite elements they are unordered there is no sequence there is no such thing as a first element of a set and so on uh, and as in mathematics no duplicates are allowed so if you have a set uh, which is of the following form 1 comma 2 comma 3 and then again 1 then something else 1.0 and so on if you print it out you will get only 1 2 3 and then my set okay because one is repeated three times uh, twice as integer and one as a floating point number and uh, because it's a set no duplicates are allowed and uh, so it will print it exactly once and the order in which it is printed is not guaranteed it is just some ordered so sets are unordered collections okay and i've made a list of all the operations that are available on sets these are the standard mathematical operations on sets like union intersection difference symmetric difference and so on okay. so these are also given remember that uh, set is not a sequence the previous three operations that we have discussed like uh, the, the previous three data structures we have discussed strings tuples and lists are all ordered data structures they are all sequences sets are unordered data structures uh, and uh, another important thing is that uh, sets cannot contain um uh, duplicates so we have also discussed list comprehensions uh, which is a slightly tricky topic for beginners and the and one way to get used to it is to actually write code in the list comprehension notation and try to see what is happening okay so this is what i had for this class and uh, hopefully uh, so i have posted list uh, for quiz questions based on lists and strings please take a look at them um and we'll see uh, we'll see you in the next class next week so next week there's no class so oh. following week the following week and i think that's the last lecture and yeah that's, that's the last lecture correct that's the last lecture okay <coughs> so we'll see you on uh, november 13 i guess yeah yeah november 13 okay. um i think there's a um, comment from I have a suggestion about a topic for this course. We can get an intro to the major, like NumPy and Pandas. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, this will make uh, the course quite. Uh, like, so that's a that's a second course which is data analysis with Python. Yeah, there is another course for this. Yeah, because it will take. Uh, it's not a matter of like. Uh, One week or thirty minutes. Yeah, uh, it will require a lot of uh, time to understand these uh, what we call these packages or libraries in detail and how to use them. 
Uh, so there is a separate course, which is uh, data analysis in Python, which is going in parallel and which will be offered next um, quarter as well. So you can register for this course and it will require you a good understanding of lists before you can start using uh, NumPy and Pandas because it goes into arrays. Yeah. So I would uh, encourage you to take, uh, take these uh, more advanced courses as well. It's uh, difficult to cram everything into a beginner uh, programming course. So uh, because uh, you, if you want to cover NumPy and Pandas, you'll also have to explain some statistical background. Uh, and that becomes quite heavy for a single course. So uh, yeah, please take a look at the other offerings on the ACADS website as well. Okay. Yeah. A lot was discussed in today's lecture, so it will take you time to digest everything. So please take time. Uh, this was not an easy lecture by any means. There's a lot was covered. So please spend some time if you want to understand Python and become a Python programmer. Yeah. So please, uh, as I uh, uh, kind of mentioned last week as well, that this uh, particular lecture is going to be the heaviest lecture of the course. And there's a lot that has been covered. Uh, I posted some assignments, but I will also encourage you to uh, uh, do some practice problems. Hopefully we can uh, post them online. Um, and the, the purpose why all of this was put into one lecture is that you can correlate one concept with another. It's not, uh, you don't have to learn four distinct topics of lists, tuples and so on. You can say that as long as I understand strings, I can correlate what happens with lists. Uh, with what happens in strings and so on. So they are all uh, given so that you also see the analogy and the, uh, between these uh, data structures. But uh, that said, uh, there's a lot going on in this course. Please ignore the mutability issues, list comprehension and so on, if you are a beginner, because what happens before that is very important. Once you understand that, you can try to see what happens with mutability versus immutability, why I said that lists are more useful than tuples and so on. So have fun and uh, maybe we'll meet, uh, we'll meet in uh, two weeks time. Thank you. Okay, thanks.